This slide summarizes the assumptions in terms of the load resistance mechanism of a plate girdle, which we have been using for the design of a plate girdle. First, we assume that the moment is purely taken by the flame. This is in accordance to the method 1. Then, as for the shear loads, the weight carries the main portion of the shear loads and the, it is only partially contributed by the flank with the regions within 15 epsilon t ness of the flank. As for the air shear load, the weight carries the main role while the stiffness is just to top up the air shear resistance of the member. While undergoing Asia loads, we need to check for the Asia resistance of the member and also the buckling resistance of the member. Therefore, we are to check the buckling resistance for the intermediate stiffness and also the end stiffness. The difference between the intermediate stiffness and end stiffness are Intermediate stiffness, you have the web at the both sides of the stiffness while the end stiffness, you have only one side with the web The other side is considered not contributing anything to the shear buckling resistance These differences can be translated into an equivalent area and also equivalent second moment or initials which we will discuss later to design this uh, buckling resistance of the stiffener, first you need to determine the axial resistance of the member to be compared with the load. The resistance has to be greater than the load so that the ratio is to be less than 1.0 and it is considered acceptable. As for the axial resistance of the members, it is determined by the typical Asia equations where the A here now is an equivalent area of the members subjected to the Asia force and the Fy is the U strength divided by the factor of safety and to be multiplied with a reduction factor for buckling chi. To determine the chi is basically the same as that we have discussed in the previous video in terms of the compressive member. You have to check for the slenderness ratio. If the slenderness ratio is less than 0.2, that means there won't be any reductions in terms of the Asia resistance and the chi is taken as 1.0. However, if the Slenderness ratio is more than 2, that means they will be buckling and you need to quantify the chi. To determine the chi, you need phi. Phi you can obtain from these equations and you also require the imperfection factors you can obtain from the table 6.1 and 6.2. All this has been discussed in the previous video. The main difference between the calculation steps here is the equivalent area and also the equivalent step uh, I. The equivalent area is referring to this diagram where AST is actually referring to the area of this stiffness and also 30 epsilon T is actually referring to the two set of 15 epsilon t here. As for the I equivalent here, the, the first IST is actually referring to the second moment of inertia of this member rotating in these directions as obtained for the BD power 3 divided by 12, the typical equations for the I and then the second part is actually the second moment or initial for this two part which is rotating in here.
the relevant derivations are given here and here which give you the final equation of these two in determining the critical asia force the L effective is determined as 0.75 height of the web it is in reference of clause 9.4 of EC3 part 5 where both ends are considered fixed due to the welding of the stiffeners to the girdle to check for the buckling resistance of the end stiffeners the same step of calculations apply only that the A equivalent now is referring to this and this while the, the I equivalent is actually referring to this part and this part rotating in these directions the main difference is there is no additional uh, web sections here